Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with three special forces units, led by a major named Davis, on their way to the White House. Following a bomb threat from a terrorist cell, they are tasked with evacuating the president. Davis escorts the president away as soon as they arrive. While driving, the president protests that he should have been picked up in a fancier car. To his criticism, Davis responds that everything was done on purpose, to fool the terrorists into thinking the president couldn't be in this car. A few moments later, the president's cell phone rings, and as he answers it, an explosion occurs. A bunch of terrorists attack them. Davis instantly protects the president, while two of his soldiers try to repel the onslaught. During the shootout, the terrorist leader, who has a bomb connected to his vest, manages to kidnap one of Davis's crew members. The terrorist requests his subordinate and the president exchange words, but Davis's subordinate detonates the explosives linked to the terrorist leader's vest, killing both of them. Three months later, Davis is on his way to pick up his son, who is studying away from home. Some time later, his wife approaches him, to ensure he has everything he requires. Before he departs, his wife requests he call her, which he agrees to do, but only through his son's cell phone, because his own is broken. Moving to a college campus, where we meet Davis's son, Sean. All the students at this institution are forced to live in the university dormitory, and may leave only during semester breaks. After the PE lesson in the afternoon, the students will return to their respective homes, as the semester break begins tomorrow. Aaron, a friend approaches Sean after class. While they are having a pleasant talk, their teacher comes by, and warns them that the campus will be closed this afternoon. Sean knocks on Aaron's door, and when she opens it, he says they have to leave soon, because everyone else has departed, leaving only the two of them. She asks him if he wants to help her pack. Meanwhile, at the college entrance, a man wearing black sunglasses is murdering all of the security guards. A gang of suspicious people is already outside the building 20 minutes later. These people turn out to be kidnappers, hired to abduct Aaron, the daughter of a Supreme Court justice named Walton. After dispatching all of the security guards, the man, Melvin, then directs his team to complete their assigned chores as soon as possible, posing as the new driver sent by Aaron's father. Aaron and Sean walk downstairs, and when they arrive, Melvin, who claims to be Aaron's father's new driver, welcomes them. Davis arrives in front of the door at the same time, and one of the kidnappers, disguised as a security guard, stops him, and instantly reports Davis's arrival. Sean is overjoyed to see his father arrive. Aaron is ready to get into her car, when she realizes she left her laptop in her room. When Davis sees Aaron, he asks Sean who she is, and he responds that she is Aaron, the Supreme Court Justice's daughter. Davis is taken aback, not expecting to learn that the daughter of a Supreme Court Justice is enrolled at this college. Since Aaron and Sean are the only students who haven't left school, Davis proposes they wait for Aaron to return before leaving. He discovers something odd at this point. His concerns are heightened when he notices the campus cleaning workers, all appear peculiar and unusual. He instructs his kid to wait for him in the car, while he goes upstairs to meet Aaron, and inquire about the man who brought her up. When he gets upstairs, he asks Aaron to call her father, and see if he dispatched the new driver. Her father explains he did not send a new driver, and the phone call is abruptly disconnected. Davis urges her to leave campus with him immediately. But then all of the lights in the building go out. He approaches the window, and notices a woman standing guard outside. Finally, he realizes that everyone he has seen is planning to kidnap Aaron. He requests Aaron remain calm and as near to him as possible. Her cell phone suddenly rings as they try to locate a way out of the building, and when she answers it, it turns out to be a call from Melvin. Melvin understood Aaron and Davis already know what he is up to. He requests Aaron hand over her cell phone to Davis. He then claims that he and his team have already ringed the area, and hacked all of the access and networks on campus, so he demands Davis hand over Aaron to him immediately, and that he will allow Davis and his kid to leave. Instead of being terrified of the threat, Davis proudly opposes him, and declares that he will never ever hand her over to him. While Aaron's father is playing pool at home, his security walks in, to tell him that the CIA director is coming to see him, and the judge directs his bodyguard to let him in. The CIA director, Philip, explains the reason for his visit, asking the judge for his thoughts on a future trial, which will take place in the coming days. It is suggested that an amendment is being developed, and only Judge Walton's view can approve it. The honest judge flatly opposes Philip's request, and upon refusal, Philip declares his daughter will undoubtedly suffer a horrific fate, if he does not get his way. Back at campus, Sean becomes concerned, since his father and Aaron have not returned, so he goes in search of them. Upstairs, 
he encounters one of the kidnappers, disguised as a cleaner. Sean informs him, without any suspicion, that he is looking for his father and Aaron, who are still inside the college building. The man lies to him, stating he saw them both upstairs, and is eager to take Sean there. However, he strikes Sean from behind in the elevator. Fortunately, Davis and Aaron come a few moments later. He manages to knock the man down, and then steals his radio and revolver. He then takes Sean and Aaron to the campus library. He tells them not to go until he arrives, because he will confront the kidnappers. He hands over the gun and radio before leaving the two. Moments later, one of the kidnappers enters the elevator, and picks up two telephones on the floor, at which point, Davis unleashes his attack on him. He escorts the man to an upstairs room, to interrogate him, tying his hands. He then calls the police for assistance, but the connection is not connected, because the criminals have hacked all the campus networks. When the bald man notices Davis is caught off guard, he attacks him, but Davis eventually turns the tables, and kills the man. Melvin, the commander of the abductors and a CIA operative, on the other hand, finally discovers Davis's identity. Davis is a major in the military's highly regarded special forces, and he was a troop leader in the Bosnian, Somali and Kosovo conflicts. Davis was able to eliminate five adversaries on his own during the Somalia war. He then urges all of his soldiers to be more cautious, knowing that Davis is not just any ordinary person. Back to Aaron and Sean, they are hiding in the library. When Aaron notices Sean's wounded hand, she forces him to go to the medical room, so that the wound can be treated. She treats his hand as soon as they arrive there. Meanwhile, the man who had attacked him regains consciousness, and starts his task outside the medical room. Sean confronts him as he heads towards the medical room, and a combat starts. Sean is overwhelmed by him, but Aaron comes to his aid, wounding his face. She is then struck back, knocking her to the ground. Sean raises his gun at the man, as he notices Aaron is injured. The man surrenders under duress, and Sean lets him go. Davis is still fighting against two of Melvin's guys, and he easily defeats both of them. Aaron and Sean return to the library, but on the way, she is captured by one of Melvin's men, who disguises himself as a security guard. Sean points his gun towards him, but a long-range shot fired by Davis lands on target, and kills the man. Davis urges them to leave the campus as soon as possible, but the PE teacher from earlier appears in the room. Sean informs him that the campus is under attack, and that they must flee quickly. Davis asks the teacher whether there is another exit, except the front door. The teacher informs him there is an old elevator in the building that they should use. Melvin's henchmen continue to shoot at them, as they approach the front of the elevator. Davis eventually asks the three of them to enter the elevator first, as he fights off the attack. Sean does not want to abandon his father, and decides to accompany him, while Aaron and the teacher continue with their plan to flee the dormitory building. When they step outside, she is surprised to see Melvin and one of his subordinates, already waiting for her downstairs. It turns out the teacher had collaborated with the crew. After giving Aaron over, he demands payment from Melvin. Instead of being paid, he is murdered. Melvin then instructs his group to install a bomb in the elevator, since Davis and Sean are right on top of it. Davis hurries upstairs when he sees the device in the elevator. Judge Walton, who is deeply concerned about his daughter, receives a video of Aaron's health from Philip. She is being held captive at the moment. Walton is forced to agree with Philip's wishes, since he is concerned about his daughter's safety. Philip instructs him to come to a specific location by himself. Back at the campus, Davis and Sean are able to escape the bomb detonation. Davis orders Sean to pursue Aaron, while he eliminates the sniper on top of the building. Sean recklessly pursues Aaron on his motorcycle, as she is going to be kidnapped by Melvin. Davis eventually catches up with him, leaping onto the car driven by one of the guys, Sproul. Melvin shoots Sean in the middle of his ride, and brings him into the car. Meanwhile, Davis is still engaged in combat with Sproul and several other men. He eventually manages to tidy them all up. He then observes a GPS, that shows the whereabouts of Walton, who is driving in the same direction. A few moments later, he comes to a halt in front of Walton's car, holding a note, with the message that he will help him. They both instantly drive away, and when they arrive at the site, where Aaron and Sean are being held captive, Walton goes down on his own, and is checked on. Walton then flees, and an explosion occurs at the same time. Davis suddenly appears, armed with a gun, ready to wipe out all of Philip's men. He slaughters Philip's soldiers mercilessly, one by one. Sean tries to fight back, attacking one of the men. After defeating the man, more soldiers come, resulting in another fight. Thankfully, Sean is able to turn things around, 
and defeat all of his opponents. He then pursues Aaron, who is going to be transported aboard a ship. He is able to save her, being held at gunpoint by one of the men. After a while, Walton arrives, and promptly transports them to a safer location. Elsewhere, Davis is still fighting Melvin, and the weapon he is using accidentally hits a gas pipe, causing it to leak. Davis recognizes that the gas will cause an explosion, and flees as quickly as he could. The gas eventually explodes. He then hurries up to Sean and Aaron, who are both now safe. Melvin's unannounced visit to Philip's house the next day surprises him. Melvin appears to have survived the explosion last night, and informs, as promised, he will seek money from Philip. However, Philip argues that Davis thwarted their scheme, so he refuses to pay anything, and Melvin shoots him to death. At the hospital, Davis is with Sean, who is being treated for the injuries. He hands Sean his watch, revealing it was a present from President Clinton, in recognition of his achievement in carrying out scores of perilous missions for the country. He also repeats the president's statement when he presented the watch, when you wear this, I want you to think about the lives you saved, not the lives you took. Aaron appears moments later, making Sean very happy. Davis walks away from the two. A man arrives, holding Davis's wife prisoner. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.